Palace, who were at Blythe A when it was first commissioned 30 years ago, have been invited to return to watch the record being achieved and to share in the celebrations. They'll meet old friends and, of course, recall those days when it all began. Yeah, that was a good team over there, though. 30 years, yeah. it? Yes. Over 30 so there's a good set of over there, yes, uh, And the... He yes. the right blokes for the job, isn't Oh, good team. Yes, sir. Good team. <laughs> Peter Liversidge was Blythe's first operations and efficiency oh, engineer. It's very nice of you to ask me. Uh, I'd like to, to see you. The record Blythe A is to achieve this day is the running of each of its four 120 megawatt generating units for an astonishing 200,000 hours. There are two power stations at Blythe. Blythe A, built between 1955 and 1960, and Blythe B, completed in 1966. This 240-acre site was chosen for what, in 1954, was to be the northeast's biggest power station. Like all major buildings, it had to go down before it could go up. Blythe A alone was to cost the then enormous sum of 24 million pounds. Work progressed rapidly, and by 1958, Blythe A was beginning to look like a power station. Staff were being taken on, among them a 17-year-old apprentice who, 31 years later, is still at the station. A bit like the Klondike, um, there was uh, still a lot of unfinished work to do, a lot of civil work still to do, a lot of buildings going up. Um, the engine room itself, although the, end, the, the west end where Unit 1 was, was complete. The east end, where Unit 4 is now, was still wide open to the atmosphere. Um, if it rained, the rain came in probably as far as Unit 2. Rough, I suppose, was, was the best way to describe it, yeah. Well, it's a meeting of the old club, oh, oh, yes. <laughs> hey, Hello, Mike. How are you? All right. You're well, well, well. Hello, Ben. Hello, Joe. You look changed up. Uh, you, you look yeah. younger now than when you started here. I wish I could stop telling lies. He says it in white. Alan Nesbitt was another A station original, back at Blythe for this special day. He joined as a shift operator engineer on a day he'll never forget. A misty morning on October the 10th, 1958. We were just getting into the cold autumn season then. It was all bleak and bare and um, impressive. I was excited. There's going to be a lot to learn here. My, me and my colleagues uh, all had the same approach, I think. We were excited at the prospect of starting a power station from scratch and seeing it running successfully. Lady and gentlemen, I'm sure you're all very well aware that um, in about a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes time, a uh, number four unit will have run for 200,000 hours and it will follow on the other three having already uh, passed that figure. So it really is quite a historic day in the uh, history of Blythe. We're very pleased to have you all here to help us share in that celebration. A unit is the combination of a boiler and a turbine. Blythe A's four units were all commissioned between December 1958 and June 1960. The generators were made by Metropolitan Vickers, now part of the GEC group. The consulting engineers were the internationally known firm Mertz and McClellan, who were based in the northeast. With such a team behind it, perhaps it wasn't surprising that when Blythe A was officially declared open on June the 29th, 1960, great things were expected of both the electrical generators and the massive Babcock and Wilcox boilers. But few then guessed that 30 years later the plant would not only still be going strong, but would be on the brink of a remarkable record. I can remember when I first came here. Uh, it was a vast building. Uh, I came in the, and I was looking for a boiler. The boiler, in my ideas in those days, was a round thing that somebody shoveled coal into. Uh, I spent all the first three days looking for a boiler couldn't find it. It's, our boilers are 173 feet tall. The Metropolitan Vickers turbine 
120 megawatts just twins up in the gel together and they've been a grand uh, team and they've run together all these years. Excited enormous media interest. But here was a northeast achievement of which the whole country could be proud. Norris McWhirter, founding editor of the Guinness Book of Records, spelled out in interview after interview what he thought was the real significance of the achievement. Seven other countries, and it's a great tribute, I think, to British engineering. Here we are gathered today on an occasion which is really like the four-minute mile of power generation, the magic of rowing numbers. And to some ways, it has the same sort of thrilling uh, atmosphere. I was present at the first Four Minute Mile back in 1954, and uh, I was actually the announcer when Roger Bannister did that great uh, achievement. And I think this is another great British achievement, and I'm looking forward to five and a half years hence, when they reach the million mark on these four sets. <laughs> Ammons FM Stereo, this is BBC Radio Newcastle. Maurice McWhirter, the founder of the Guinness Book of Records, is visiting Blythe Power Station today to mark what's believed to be a world record. The Blythe Power Station's four units have been running for more than 200,000 years. yet more reminiscing. Yeah, and then of course, once the freeze, the big freeze had gone, it was a big freeze, well, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we were going around with blow lamps and anything, you know, to, uh, to yeah. free the water, yes. you know, to sort of get the flow through yeah. To, yeah. to be able to start fans and what have you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The hands were blue with the cold, oh, dreadful. you know, oh, yes. yeah. really blue. You had, a, you had a claim around. But, but we had a, we had a, we hold on to places, you know, which is... Oh, yeah. But we had an atmosphere then, didn't we? Oh, yeah. We had an atmosphere yeah. then. Yeah. We wanted to make it work. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. everyone. Yeah. We really wanted to yeah. together. That's right. Everyone. Pull what together. Is, uh, <laughs> Mr. Lott always emphasised the Blythe spirit. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Though this day's events were a celebration of Blythe A's achievements past and present, many thoughts were on the future and the government's privatisation proposals for the electricity supply industry. The people that originally commissioned the plant, together with those that are currently operating the plant, have demonstrated again that the staff of the CGB have a commitment to generate electricity first and foremost, and because of that commitment, they're going to succeed just as well in the private sector as they did in the public sector. The rules will change, but the staff have a commitment, have an ability, have a competence, and will be able to cope with the changes in a way which will ensure that they'll, they'll do that job just as satisfactorily as they've ever done before. After privatisation, Blythe Power Station becomes an asset of national power, the bigger of two new private sector generating companies created from the CGB. In recognition of the Blythe A record, directors of National Power's Thermal Division held a board meeting on the premises, the first time this has happened at any power station. After the meeting, a tour of the station. Employees who'd all helped to make the record possible were congratulated. As members of the board appreciated, the achievement was the result of teamwork in every department. The town of Blythe in Northumberland won a place in the Guinness Book of Records today. The record has been achieved by the town's power station, which may even be a world beater, as Tony Baker reports. 
It's a major success story. All four of the Blind A power station generating units have clocked up more than 200,000 hours of running time. That means that in 30 years since the coal-fired station was commissioned, Blind A has burned 38 million tons of northeast coal and has effectively powered the whole of Tyneside during that period. The Northeast Power Station has achieved a British record and sent experts searching through record books to find out if it's obtained a notable world first. Blind A Power Station earned a place in the record books, and to confirm its status, Norris McWhorter, the founding editor of the Guinness Book of Records, was on hand. Uh, I don't know of any other station in the company that has run for 200,000 hours on each unit. I think if you examine the record, Within that 200,000 hours, you find plant which has performed well, which has produced electricity with economy, which has been able to respond under the control of the operating staff and the engineers to the demands of the system. So I'm uh, incredibly impressed. There's quality engineering here. There's clearly some uh, good operation here. And I think uh, it's very, very impressive. Personally, I'm very proud and delighted to be the station manager on, on the, this remarkable day.